Hi friends, today I'm going to talk about the top 10 things I do to make sure that I'm safe while car camping. This is a subject that has been highly requested by you guys, so I'm really excited to get into it. Um, it is about 105 degrees outside and I am sitting in a parking lot, so the windows are down and hopefully the traffic noise isn't too distracting. Let's start off with the obvious. I am always looking out for predators. Sometimes that means people, and sometimes that means animals. It's important to be prepared for both. Number one, always be stealthy, no matter what. I've talked about this in previous uh, videos. It doesn't matter if you're in a campsite, it doesn't matter if you're on the street, in on BLM land. If you are a so solo female traveler, or you are somebody who feels at risk, being stealthy is going to save you from exposing yourself to the world. And what I mean by that is you don't want to put a flag out or a sign out that says, I'm alone and vulnerable, please come take advantage of me. Being stealthy is not just about not getting or harassed or what have you. It's also about not getting robbed. I have heard so many stories from men and women, um, but I think that, I think I'm talking to the men right now because I think that sometimes men have a false sense of security. Women are always watching out for themselves. I don't need to remind women to, to watch out for your surroundings and to be stealthy because we do that all the time. But I have heard of um, camper, people who, car camping people, oh Lord, the heat really is getting to me. I've heard of people who live out of their cars or who do a lot of road tripping who will wander around a national park, for example, with really expensive camera gear. Maybe they're sitting outside at a picnic bench and they're typing on their really nice laptop and then they throw it all in their car and go on a nice hike or go and see a monument and somebody's been watching them and now they know that inside of that car is stuff to steal. Uh, just, just, I think my point is make sure you know where you are, who's watching, and what the possibilities are of you getting into a situation where you are either physically victimized or monetarily victimized. My last little side note for being stealthy is don't post your location ever. I never post my location. I never talk about my location and nobody knows about my location except for my loved ones until I'm back at home and I'm safe. Posting your location is the fastest and easiest way for a predator to come find you. Number two, just because it's light outside doesn't mean you're safe. I think that a lot of people have a false sense of security. Oh, and please know, I'm not trying to fear monger anybody. These are just my personal experiences, and this is what I do to make sure that I feel safe. Um, you should do what makes you feel safe. There's no judgment here. I have, in the past, had a false sense of security in regards to it being light outside, so of course nothing's going to happen when it's light outside. That is untrue. That is very untrue. And I have heard of several stories of people who have been, uh, like I said, working on their computer at a park bench. They put their computer in their van, they walk away and somebody steals it. Uh, somebody walking to their car thinking nothing of it because it's noon and somebody tries to rob them or harass them in some way. So um, always being aware, even if it's light outside, is a good idea. Number three is always park, well, let me start over. If you are stealth camping on the side of the street, if you're parked where you're not supposed to be parked and you're locked up for the evening with your window coverings and everything, make sure you're parked in a really well lit area. It is much better to get a knock on the window for, from a police officer asking you to move along than it is for a potential break-in from a predator. Number four is read the signs. If you don't wanna knock on your window, make sure you're not parked in a no parking zone. Make sure that the signs that are around you don't say things like no camping or no overnight camping or 
private property or something along those lines. If you're parked on the side of the street, make sure there's no, this, there's nothing there suggesting that you shouldn't be there. Number five is trust your instinct. If your body is telling you something is wrong, it's because it is. Move along. There's plenty of spots. There's plenty of places to be. You don't need to be where you're uncomfortable. With that in mind, number six is be aware of your surroundings. I think I've already talked about this, but let's just drive home the point. Okay, being aware of your surroundings is, like I said before, so important, in my opinion, um, and, and constantly being vigilant of that, um, preparing yourself for the worst case scenario. For example, I always back my car in. I never pull in nose first. I always back in. Several reasons for that. Well, that's not true. One reason for that, and that is because if you are in an emergency situation, whether it's a fire, a flood, you're trying to escape somebody, there's something wrong, being able to jump in your car and just pull forward is so much more, is that right? So much more? Is more safe and efficient than if you were to have to do a three-point turn to get out of a parking spot. <laughs> God, I hope this is okay. <laughs> Maybe I should have some water. Oh, number seven is one of my favorites. <laughs> but not because it's important, but just because it's an interesting question. I cannot tell you how many times I have been asked, do I carry a gun when I backpack, hike, explore, or car camp? The answer is no, I do not. And it is not because I'm anti-gun. It is not because I'm anti-Second Amendment or any sort of political thing like that. It is because I don't know how to use one. And I don't believe that I should be carrying around a deadly weapon if I don't know how to use it, clean it, store it. Whatever else you're supposed to do with a gun, I have no idea. If you do not have the muscle memory to be able to react in a, in a dangerous situation with a gun, you have no business owning one, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. You guys do what you want to do. Do I carry a weapon? Maybe. With that in mind, it is so important for you to check the state and uh, country laws in regards to firearms and such. For example, <laughs> in Canada, it is illegal to have pepper spray, but not bear spray. And in Texas, there are no laws around guns, but if you crossed into California, things would be much different. So if you're going to carry firearms or any sort of protection things. Just check the state's laws and the and the the country laws before you try and cross into their borders. <laughs> Number 8. Communicate. Oh, I didn't even do that on purpose. <laughs> I always have a satellite phone no matter where I go. Um satellite phones are great when you don't have reception and sometimes I've heard people say, oh, I'm not going to go into the back country. Y'all, sometimes the back country is a small town in Colorado up in the hills. I have been in some places where you would expect to have cell service or internet and there is nothing to be had. So having a satellite device like a Garmin Enreach, for example, um, can get you out of some pretty tricky situations if you get stuck or if you get into trouble. Stuck meaning stuck in the snow, stuck in the mud, run out of gas, dead battery in the middle of BLM land, 10 miles away from the closest town, or in trouble like a bear just tried to attack you or there's a strange man stalking you. It's good to, to be able to communicate with the outside world. Get yourself a satellite phone. With that in mind, I'm gonna circle back around to what I said in um, number one, which is don't post your location. I do believe it's important to tell your loved ones where you are. Whenever I'm out, I always check in with my loved ones. I tell them where I'm going, I check in once I'm there, and I check in as I'm leaving. 
I think number nine is pretty obvious and I know I've talked about this before, but I'm going to say it again. Make sure your car is working well. This is very important for you to be able to um, be safe while car camping. When was the last time you had the oil changed? Are all of the fluids topped off? How do your tires look? Do you have jumper cables? Do you have those things that you put underneath the tire in order to get your car out of snow or mud? Do you have a tow hitch? Do you have a tow? Um, those are all the types of things that I bring with me when I'm out and about. Uh, I'm sure I'm missing something. Oh, chains for your car? Do you have roadside assistance? Do you have some sort of AAA situation where they can come and get you? And how far out will they go to get you? Because if you're in BLM land, 10 miles out of town, are they going to come get you? I don't know. I've never had to use it. Oof. But it's a good thing to check. It's a good thing to understand. Y'all, we made it to number 10. Can you believe it? Half brain dead here. Super hot. I've been in recovery from my surgery for two weeks. And uh, I can't believe we've made it to number 10. So here it is. Get connected. Figure out who your community is. Figure out who your support system is and connect with them. You can do this via Facebook, Instagram, and I'm sure other um, social media networks. Those are the two that I'm aware of. There are tons of van life groups. There are tons of RV groups. There are tons of long distance backpacker groups. There are so many groups out there that want to help and want to talk about their experiences. It is a wealth of free knowledge that if you live this lifestyle, you should absolutely be tapping into. And I don't use the word should lightly. I hate that word. But it is just it, everything that I know, everything that I've learned, all of the stories I've told you, they all come from these groups. If you check into the communities, you will have such an incredible experience and it won't feel so lonely. Van lifeing slash car camping slash road tripping can be incredibly lonely if you don't have a community, <clears throat> if you don't have a community to check in with. I hope this answered all of your questions. If you have any more, feel free to reach out to me. Or if you have anything to add to this list, let's do it. Let's make sure that uh, this little family that we're creating has all the information that we can in, re in regards to being safe. I really appreciate your time today, and I, I hope that this was helpful. <laughs> Take care.